to. Hi guys, this is 5.8, the Fibonacci sequence, and uh, this and the next section are actually one of my favorite sections to talk about in MGF 1107 Liberal Arts. So hopefully you share my sentiment because I think it's pretty neat. So we're going to be looking at the Fibonacci sequence and Fibonacci-like sequences. In addition, we're going to be learning about how the Fibonacci sequence is used to describe man-made and natural things. So in objective number one, the Fibonacci sequence, the Fibonacci sequence was discovered by Leonardo of Pisa, who was also known as Fibonacci. By the way, Leonardo da Vinci, Leonardo da Pisa, that is just telling you the name Leonardo comes from Pisa. So Pisa is a town in Italy, as is Leonardo da Vinci. Vinci is a town in Italy. So it's kind of like saying, my name's Joanne from St. Pete. Okay. Anyways, I just wanted to let you know, as a side note. So he was also known as Fibonacci, hence where the Fibonacci sequence name comes from. He wrote a book. And the book is called Libro Abaci. So it's the book of the abacus. Abacus, uh, if you know what that is, it's a tool that they used to use to add, subtract, multiply, and divide. So it was like the predecessor of a calculator. So Fibonacci was one of the most well-known mathematicians during the Middle Ages. So, you know, people say that, you know, the Middle Ages, some knowledge was lost and, you know, society went basically backwards However, there are some shining examples of things that did well during the Middle Ages, such as Fibonacci's book and uh, the Notre Dame Cathedral in Paris. Anyways, so the sequence was developed from his observations of mating pairs of rabbits. So he noticed that the mating pair of rabbits grew, and he wrote down that growth rate and therefore came up with the sequence. And the sequence is as follows. 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, 21, dot, dot, dot. That means it continues on indefinitely. This is an example of an additive sequence. Uh, additive because we look at the sequence and we take the, the first two numbers that we see, which is 1 and 1, and we add them together and we get 2, which is the third number in the Fibonacci sequence. And then if I add the second and third numbers in the sequence together, one plus two, I get three. And if I add the third and fourth numbers together, I get two plus three, which is five, which is the next value in the Fibonacci sequence. So you go so on and so forth, three and five gives me eight, 5 and 8 gives me 13. 8 and 13 gives me 21. So the next number in his sequence would be 13 plus 21, which is 34. So that's how you get the Fibonacci sequence. So once again, it's additive, just like the Egyptian numeral system's additive. And you would need to add the previous two numbers in the sequence together to get the next number in the sequence. Okay, so let's check out those, those mating pairs. So, you know, if I start out with one mating pair of rabbits, if you know stuff about rabbits, you know that they reproduce very, very quickly because they are prey animals. And usually prey animals will re reproduce very, uh, much, much faster than something that is not a prey animal, i.e. people, uh, elephants, for example, those kind of things, predators. Okay, so let's say after a month, we still have just the mating pair because they're not ready to mate. And let's say after that month, they mated, and now we have their offspring. And let's say they had two rabbits. So now we have one mating pair for the first month, one mating pair for the second month. Now we have two mating pairs. And let's say after that month, we now have three mating pairs of rabbits. And after that month, 
we have five mating pairs of rabbits. So if you notice, these are numbers in the Fibonacci sequence. One, one. Hmm, that was weird. Uh, one, one. Two, three, five. And then we would assume Fibonacci saw the next month would be eight mating pair of rabbits. So that's where this came from. So I just wanted to show you how that all works. Okay, we're ready for objective two, which is Fibonacci like sequences. And my math lab would ask you to um, look at a sequence and determine if it is Fibonacci like in nature. So we have to remember that for the sequence to be Fibonacci, it has to be additive. So let's go ahead and look at this next one. It says determine if the sequence is a Fibonacci like sequence. So part A says 2, 4, 6, 10, 16. So let's check it out. So we take the first two numbers, add them together. We get six. That's the third number. So that's okay. Then we take uh, the second and third numbers together, which is four plus six. We get 10. Okay. That's the next number in the sequence. Then we take six plus 10 and check it out. It equals 16. That's the next number in the sequence. So yes, the answer to this is yes, it is Fibonacci like because if I add the previous two numbers together, I get that number in the sequence. So let's check out B. 19 plus 21, I'm adding the first two together. And when I add those together, I get 40. That does not work out because the third number in the sequence is 35. It's supposed to be 40 if it was Fibonacci-like. So the answer to this is no. Okay, let's look at objective number three, Fibonacci sequence in nature. There are many times or many things that display numbers in the Fibonacci sequence. There are several, several examples that you can find. Here are a few that I find to be beautiful. We're going to look at the pine cones first because they're really fascinating. So pine cones come from pine trees. And not all pine trees make pine cones, but uh, let's see a traditional pine cone that you can find. So if we look at the, the bottom of the pine cone and we count the spirals coming out from the center, we're going to notice something really interesting. If we go clockwise and I'm looking at this first one, I get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight spirals going clockwise. Okay. Now, if we go counterclockwise on this same pine cone, we get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen 10, 11, 12, 13 spiral going counterclockwise. So if we look at this, 8 and 13 are numbers right next to each other in the Fibonacci sequence. So that's pretty neat. Um, almost all pine cones do this. However, there are some exceptions to the rule. They just grow weird, then they won't show the Fibonacci sequence. But it's quite, quite nice when you find something that you can, you know, do. I know some of you guys said you like the national parks. Maybe if you're there and you find a pine cone, you can, you know, count the number of spirals and show your friends and family what you learned in this class. It's really cool. All right, so that's pine cones. Another example that, you know, we probably are more able to see in Florida here is pineapples. So if you count spirals, you know, if you count spirals moving in this direction, you know, um, we're going to count those, or sorry, not the spirals, sorry about that, the number of, let me backtrack, the number of hexagonal shapes going across, we'll notice that there's five. So one, two, three, four, five. So that is one number in the Fibonacci sequence. Now if I look at the spirals going um, from the top left down to the right, if I count those, I get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and it's not showing the eighth one. And then the spirals going around this way will give me 13. So it's really, really neat. Um, and pineapples are really cool because now we have three numbers 
in the Fibonacci sequence. And like I said, the 13th one, I think it extends around. So kind of neat uh, how this is working. And um, like I said, most pineapples will dis display this. So if you have a pineapple out, you can count the number of spirals going one way or the other way and see that they are three numbers in the Fibonacci sequence. So the next thing I want to talk about is sunflowers. We saw that uh, in the example of the um, pine cones, if you count the seed spirals going clockwise or counterclockwise, we have two numbers in the Fibonacci sequence. Uh, sunflowers do the same thing. So let me go back to this picture. If we count the number of petals, we notice that there's 21 petals. 21 is in the Fibonacci sequence. If we look at the spirals, so here is a image of the spirals going clockwise and counterclockwise. And if you count them, they're usually two numbers that are, are sequential in the Fibonacci sequence. In this case, there's going to be 21 going one way and 34 going the other, which once again are subsequent numbers in the Fibonacci sequence. Okay, so once again, count the clockwise and counterclockwise spirals, and you'll find that they are usually two sequential numbers in the Fibonacci sequence. And finally, I have, I think, one last example for you. There are other flowers that display this, and this is something I, that I did find off the internet just for you to see, you know, talking about how many petals each flower has. In this case, there's one. In this case, there's two. In this case, there are three. Uh, five here, uh, twice actually. Here's one, two, three, four, five. And then the outside, one, two, three, four, five. Uh, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then I'm not going to do the next one for you, but 13, 21, and 34. So it's just some examples of how we can use the Fibonacci sequence to describe things found in nature. And here's another nice image that I found. I don't know if you're fans of roses or not, but the inside petals, if you check it out, we have eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And as we go out, if we start counting the next uh, roundabout petals, we have one, two, three, four, five. So five and eight are sequential numbers in a Fibonacci sequence. So the next section you're going to see, I made a PowerPoint presentation about the golden ratio. And we're going to see how the Fibonacci sequence and the golden ratio are interconnected. All right, that's it. I hope you enjoyed. And yeah, go ahead and do your homework.